Hello everyone. In the last lecture, we discussed how foregrounding is achieved through linguistic deviation. In this lecture, we will discuss how foregrounding is achieved through parallel structure. Let's learn our today's lecture. So, what is parallelism? If deviation is unexpected irregularity in language, then parallelism is unexpected regularity. So, you can see that on the one hand, deviation is unexpected irregularity. So, there are certain linguistic structure which occur irregular, irregularly in a language. And on the other hand, we have parallelism where certain linguistic structure occur in a text regularly. Right? So, certain the repetition of certain linguistic structure in a text is called parallel structure or it is called parallelism. So, parallelism is the other means by which foregrounding effects can be created in text. So, we have one means that is deviation and we have another means that through which we can create effect, right? Uh, that is uh, a parallelism. So, in cases of parallelism, the foregrounding effect arises out of a repeated structure such as an example. So, you can see here the difference between deviation and parallelism. Deviation, what happens in deviation? Certain linguistic structures are made deviant in order to make them prominent or to achieve certain goals. Like we have semantic deviation, we have syntactic deviation, we have pragmatic deviation, we have morphological deviation, we have phonological deviation. Right? So, through this, such as through the different level of deviation, foregrounding is achieved. Right? And effect, stylistic effect is created. So, that is one means. Okay? The other means that is parallelism. Certain linguistic structures are repeated again and again in a text to produce a stylistic effect. Look at this example. Here we have. And every week he tipped up half his wage. And what he didn't spend each week he saved. And praised his wife for every meal she made. And once for laughing, punch her in the face. So first we have to focus that there are some phonological parallel structure. For example, we can see here the sound a is used here, like in wage, like in saved, like in made, and like in face. So, the same parallel structure is repeat, right, where in these four lines, there is repetition, right, it is repeated again and again. Similarly, that you can see that every line begins with end, conjunction and. And is here, and is here, and is here, and, and is here. So again, here we have another parallel structure. Similarly, that in the three lines, line one, line two, line three, the same semantic structure. That is like a, a kind of external parallel structure. That is repeated. While the fourth line is a little bit different, right? We can't say that it is like parallel structure. So, we can see that the last line again, that is uh, the, the example of deviation. So, a kind of mix uh, like structures we have. In the three lines, first three lines, we can see parallelism and the fourth line, it is deviant. Then above the three lines. So, we will have some uh, explanation of this on the coming slide. Level of parallelism. As with deviation, parallelism can occur at different level of linguistic structure. The short extract above from Simmons Armitage poems contain a number of instances of parallelism. First of all, there is syntactic parallelism of every line beginning with the conjunction and. You can see here 
that every line it begins with conjunction and. So this is known as syntactic parallelism, right? Because every sentence it begins with a conjunction and. Second, there is phonological parallelism inherent in the sound A that appears in the final word of each line. We can see that here, wage, saved, made, and face. So we have sound A, that is diphthong. And third, there is semantic parallelism in the first three lines in that each of them detail a positive value actions in comparison with the negative connotation of the actions described in the fourth. So in the first three lines, we can see that a positive description is there something that is positive while the last one that is negative so again the last one that is deviation in the first three line we can see semantic parallelism and in four lines we can see syntactic parallelism and four lines we can also see phonological parallelism right but semantic parallelism we can see in the first three line while the fourth line it is deviant right now, semantic parallelism. This semantic parallelism occurs in each of the poem's three main stanza. The poem ends with a couplet, thereby extending the parallelism across the whole text. So, we have parallelism across the whole text if you uh, read the whole uh, poem. Now, with regard to interpreting parallel structure, Leach 1969 on page 67 explained that every instance of parallelism set up a relationship of equivalence between two or more elements. So, two or more elements, they are equal. Where? In parallel structure. The elements which are sig sig signaled out by the pattern as being parallel like we have phonological parallelism, syntactic parallelism, morphological parallelism, right, semantic parallelism, pragmatic parallelism. So interpreting the parallelism involves appreciating some external connection between these elements. When we talk about semantic parallelism, so we see that what is the external connection between each line and each stanza. Essentially, we are invited to look for connection between each of the lines that are parallel. Each of the line that is parallel, we can have internal uh, parallelism or we can have external parallelism. So semantic parallelism, that is the example of external parallelism. Fine. And uh, uh, like syntactic parallelism, phonological parallelism or morphological parallelism, that would be the example of internal parallelism. Similarly, that pragmatic would be also the example of external parallelism. So this is easy to do for the first three lines of the stanza in example three. The parallelism appears to reinforce the positive evaluations of the prepositional content. The fourth line, though despite being syntactically and phonologically parallel to the three preceding lines, differ greatly in semantic terms because it contains words with a pejorative connotation. So syntactically, we can see the fourth lines are parallel. Phonologically, we can see that the fourth lines are parallel. But semantically, the first three lines are parallel, while the fourth line is not parallel that is deviant right nevertheless the parallelism invite us to see the action describes in the fourth line as being somehow equivalent to those described in the first three lines the fourth line is also foregrounded additionally because it is semantically deviant so the fourth line is semantically deviant so that is deviation then when compared to the preceding three lines, this is quite a complex example because of the mix of parallelism and deviation and the paradoxical interpretation we are forced into a result of uh, the parallelism in sum up in the final couplet of the poem. You can see here is how they rated him when they looked back and sometimes he did this and sometimes he did that. Again, we can see in this the last line a parallel structure. Sometimes he did this and sometimes he did that. 
So the final couplet again we can see a parallel structure, right? Now again the line that here is how they rated him when they looked back. Sometimes he did this and sometimes he did that. So thank you so much. That was that how far grounding is achieved through parallel structure. Parallel structures in a language is that when certain uh, like uh, sometimes we will have sounds, sometimes you will have uh, like uh, morphemes, sometimes we may have like a, a conjunction, right? Or sometimes we, we may have like a semantic meaning, pragmatic meaning. So these structures are repeated in a text, right? When like certain structures are repeated uh, uh, in a sentence, we call it syntactic parallelism. Okay, and when certain sounds are repeated in each line or within the line, we call it phonological parallelism. And the same meaning is repeated in every line, we call it semantic parallelism. Similarly, pragmatic parallelism. So, semantic and pragmatic parallelism are the example of external parallelism, while syntactic parallelism. Uh, phonological parallelism, uh, morphological parallelism, these are the example of internal parallelism. So thank you so much. Please don't forget to subscribe and like the channel and please provide your valuable comment and feedback in the comment section. Thank you so much.